specially trained dogs have joined the search for the missing British teenager Jay Slater. The 19-year-old from Lancashire went missing after attending a music festival with friends on the Spanish island of Tenerife 10 days ago. His family have travelled to the island to join the search. Let's speak to our correspondent Nick Garnett, who's in Tenerife. Obviously a huge amount of concern for Jay Slater, Nick, but every effort being made still to find him. Yes, the Spanish authorities say that they have not in any way stepped down the search and indeed have intensified it in terms of what they're doing. They brought in yesterday uh, special search dogs that have been brought over from the Spanish capital Madrid and had been, uh, they, they are what they call large search area dogs and they can search a huge area of land very, very quickly uh, and find anything at all that is of interest. Uh, at the moment, there's been no sighting of him, no, no sign of him in terms of anything that has been found by the mountain rescue teams, by the uh, search volunteers, by the fire teams that have been up, by the uh, civil guards and by or every other police authority that there is. Nothing has been found. And so the hope is that these search dogs will be able to go to areas that we can't on two legs and be able to find things that we can't at all. Um, but at the moment, they will be going up in the next half an hour into that search area. I'm at the moment in uh, an area of Tenerife called Los Cristianos, which is in the south coast of the island. If you look over my shoulder there, right in the distance, you might be able to see a stretch of land reaching down to the sea, and that is the area that they're searching. It's an awful long way from here, and the question is, what was Jay Slater doing there? A 19-year-old, a trainee bricklayer, he'd come across from Lancashire in the northwest of England for a, uh, a music festival, a three-night music festival. He'd been at that. On the last night, he went with two people that he'd met there over to a house in that area of land, um, which is not a tourist area. It's a hiking area, if anything. It's, it's very rural, very rugged, very rough, uh, and spent the night there. In the early morning, he got up, walked out, and saw a neighbour who owned the property and asked the neighbour when the next bus was uh, because he wanted to get home to this area. The lady told him that it wasn't for another couple of hours, and so he started walking. Now, he walked up the hill, away from the village and away from the direction that he should perhaps have been heading if he wanted to walk towards his home. And so that question, what happened to him afterwards, why he was there in the first place, these are all questions that the authorities have no answers for at the moment, his family have no answers for, and, and really, it's, it, you know, the only person who can explain that to us perhaps is Jay himself. The hope is that he is still alive uh, and that he is still well enough to be able to be found and to be brought back uh, and uh, his parents, as I say, are absolutely beside themselves. They have been putting up posters. They have been uh, trying to campaign to make sure that the authorities do as much as they possibly can, calling for the British search authorities to come over and help as well. Uh, an offer that was made and then turned down by the Spanish authorities. Uh, and so at the moment we are in this impasse that nothing has been found and the search in its 10th day now goes on. Tell us about the conditions then that they're working in. I mean, not just rugged terrain, but sometimes terrific heat. Yes, sometimes terrific heat during the day, but also almost freezing cold. So when I have been up in that area in the early hours of the morning, around dawn, I've had to wear coats, I've had to wear every layer that I can. Now, Jay was only wearing a T-shirt, shorts and a pair of trainers. Didn't have any water with him, didn't have a mobile phone because it had run out of battery. And really, these are very, very, very raw conditions. It's that dense undergrowth uh, and really hard, dry soil. It's difficult underfoot. There are cacti plants everywhere you walk. Uh, in his last conversation with one of his friends, he said that he'd, been, he'd scratched himself and cut his leg on a cactus. Um, it's very easy to see why. I was walking down some of the paths that he may have been walking on, and I went flying as well, just as, as everyone in our group did, because it's so... Uh, so, so soil-based, but also crumbling underneath because there's, there's no rain up there at this time of the year at all. So intense heat during the day, uh, colder at night with some very high winds as well. Really inhospitable. But the question is, it's not completely without civilization. And what people can't work out is why he didn't bump into somebody else or someone else didn't bump into him if he was staying to the roads. But the police, or, police operation has been working and concentrating off-road in ravines that he may have walked on uh, and walked down to. Why he did that, 
nobody knows. Nick, for the moment, thank you very much. Nick Garnett in Tenerife.